Hey guys, what up? It's me, Nikki again. What up? That's become my thing. What up? Um, I would ask how you're all doing, but then I might get some smart ask being like, How are we doing? We can't tell you, because it's a camera. Duh. Like, it's a rhetorical question. And I still kind of want to know how you guys are doing, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. Caitlin's sitting over here. She's editing. I've taught her to edit. There's her hand. Yes. Now she's stabbing me with the stylus. Ooh, stroking. Stroking. I love you. Okay, hi. Hi. <laughs> okay, so um, I've just come back from a photo shoot. I did my first ever like boudoir shoot. Ooh, it's all sexy. So, um, so that's why my hair is all curly and like flashy and things like that. And my makeup is done really well because I didn't do it. Caitlin did. Um, so when I get some of the photos, if they're really cool, I'll post them on Google Plus or on my Instagram. So we'll see how those came out. Um, I figured today I would get deep again. So I thought I would talk about my thoughts of anxiety. Um, kind of before my transition and how, I, how it manifests itself now and how I deal with it. Um, and then briefly touch on like how I contemplated killing myself before I started my transition. Dun dun dun! dun, dun. <laughs> I won't. So, yeah, because these things are coming through my mind, you know, and, you know, it's, they come into a lot of people's minds, especially the trans community, because unfortunately it is a reality. So, let me talk about my anxiety first. Um, before my transition, I think a lot of my anxiety stemmed from the fact that I felt I was always going to be seen as a guy. Um, you know, I didn't think that I could actually ever transition. Um, I didn't think I would have the money for it. I didn't think that I'd have the support. I didn't think that I'd have, um, you know, I just the resources. It, it, it seemed like such an unattainable goal for me. And then I also, like, I was scared that if I had transitioned or started or whatever, um, would I ever pass? And I know it's not all about passing. It's definitely not. And I know a lot of people who actually take great pride in the fact that they don't try to conform to society's expectations of what a female or a male should look like. But at the same time, I do want to pass. I respect and I commend those people because that takes immense bravery. I'm not one of those people. I want to be able to just look like a biological born female because I don't like people staring. Never mind my bright colorful hair and piercings and tattoos. Um, so. I think a lot of my anxiety stemmed from that, um, and it's quite funny, it stemmed from when I finally realized that I was trans. Um, when I didn't know and I thought I was just kind of weird and had like a weird fetish or whatever, I th think it wasn't that as bad. But once I had realized that I was living in the wrong body, that's when it started to manifest itself really badly. Um, and then I started going to therapy and stuff like that, and it kind of made it worse. Because although I was talking about how I felt I was, I also felt that my therapist didn't believe me. Considering it took three years for me to get my hormones, um, there was this doubt, you know, in his mind. And he didn't believe me. And this brought on a lot more anxiety because I was like, well, if you don't believe me, like, I walked in, I was like, I'm trans, I'm a girl, that's it, done. And he was like, yeah, I don't know, maybe, we'll see. And... Like, this brought on immense anxiety because I was like, I know who I am. And he was doubting that. And he was the one who was in control of whether or not I blossomed or not. Hold on, can you switch on one of those lights? It's gonna take a while. Okay. Sorry, I'm getting more light because it's getting dark. It's getting like nighttime. Ooh. That's fine. Oh. Thank you. Okay. Um, so, yeah, so it, it's. Um, it did. It, it, it brought on so much anxiety. And at this point, I had already been cutting myself quite a lot. Um, I cut myself on my thighs. I cut myself on my wrists. I got a really bad scar here. I don't know if you guys can see it. Um, I kind of covered it with my tattoo. Um, but I And that was quite a deep one. It was quite bad. I was quite psycho when I did it. <laughs> um, one girl's a psycho. Um, yeah, but I, I really was. I wasn't in a good spot at the time. And... Um, and then, like, year, a year went on and two years went on with my therapy and, like, nothing was getting to 
like I wasn't I didn't feel like I was getting any closer um, and then I had to take a break with my therapy because I just couldn't afford it and this was after like a year and a half of therapy and I felt that I was never gonna get to where I needed to go like I I'd been going for a year and a half we had established that it was just kind of who, it was, who I was and all of this and my therapist had finally started to believe me and now I had to stop because I didn't have money um, so I, I was almost validated in who I meant to be and then had to stop and like I knew that if I had gone somewhere else I would have had to start again um, so I like thought of suicide started to creep in because I had established that this is what was wrong with me and I put wrong in inverted commas because there's nothing wrong with it but my whole life I felt out of joint, out of place and now I had finally established that this is who I was and I couldn't do anything about it because I didn't have money. Um, you know our country doesn't give hormones on medical aid because it's seen as elective so I was pretty screwed. Um, so I thought about suicide. I figured that I was never going to get to be... Caitlin's going, home. Oh, I don't think she's even heard any of this. No, I haven't. Um, so I kind of figured that I was never going to get to who I really was. And I figured that the easiest way to get out of that predicament was just to kill myself. Oh. And I know I speak quite, like, smiley about it, but it is a serious subject because it is serious. You know, it is a main cause for suicide because... I didn't feel like I could belong and for something as trivial as money to stop me seemed quite pointless you know so I had kind of planned it out I had kind of like I had even gone as far as buying the blades and I was gonna sl slip my wrists I wasn't gonna be as dramatic as I've told Caitlin and like in the bath with like music playing and candles I was gonna kind of do it on my bed and just you know fact if you ever found me you would have had to clean it um, but then, oh, apparently it's Depression Awareness Week. So that I guess July is, so I guess this video is perfect timing then. Um, so yeah, so I had gone as far to to get like the the blades and all of that. And I think the only thing that actually stopped me was the fact that there were like two or three people who knew about me, who supported me, and like would help me like get dressed up at times and come and chill with me and stuff like that and also I didn't want people to have to clean up my body I thought that was kind of gross so I think that thought kind of saved my life because I that was it like I had pretty much given up everything you know I stayed in a different city to my family I stayed and my friends were close but I knew they wouldn't be that close and granted now I'm not hardly friends with any of them um, so I was like I suppose this is the best it gets for me. Um, and I, I battled these thoughts for quite a while. I still cut myself continuously through all of this. Um, as well as pretty much got shit face drunk every night for like three years. Um, I think a lot of the time I couldn't do it because I could barely stand because I was so drunk. Um, so yeah, so I think substance abuse kind of helped with my depression if that makes any sense because I went from happy to comatose wake up the next morning happy to comatose and that just kind of repeated itself so I didn't actually have an opportunity to get sad um, but it was all a mask um, and then I eventually went back to my therapist and I eventually got my endocrinologist and I eventually um, got my hormones off after like years and like fighting for who I was it was by no means an easy trip um, and then I started my pills and I was happy and I was like yay cool happy and I had all my friends support and I had my girlfriend at the time support and all of that went really well and then we stopped making money at the business that we ran so I decided to go work for my dad because how else would I pay rent and so I did that and just before I left to go work for my dad in construction my girlfriend at the time broke up with me. She couldn't deal with dating a girl which is fine. You know there is nothing wrong. Most relationships that I found tend to break up if it was quite a drastic change. Mine was a drastic change. So 
that happened and then I had to get I got shipped off to Swaziland the country within my country it's like the Vatican in Rome it's a country within a country we're fancy like that we're, yeah we're, we're, cool, we're, we're cool like that and um, so then I was alone I didn't have any friends I didn't have any family there I was literally by myself I had just been broken up with um, so a whole nother sense of anxiety came upon me of is this the right choice? I have a friend who's going through this now at the moment as well. You know, because it is such a hard journey, because you do lose so many people, that question does creep into your mind. Is this the right choice? Was this the right thing to do? Was it worth everything that I've lost? You know, um, and I was there for three months and I had this going through my mind consistently and I had no one to talk to. Like, I couldn't... Here I had lost people because I was trans in a country where I wasn't allowed to be trans and so I had to pretend to be male anyway and I'm thinking now is this the right choice for me and again anxiety just built up more and more and more and I felt myself having anxiety attacks like once a day um, because I had no one to talk to and I had no one to turn to and the depression just kind of built and even though I had taken the steps to being the person I wanted I didn't want to be the person I wanted to be alone. And I think that's a big thing. I think, yes, you have to be a bit selfish. And yes, you have to take the steps to being yourself. But no one wants to be alone. Um, and I think it's important to realize that when you do take these steps, you aren't alone. You lose a lot of people. Well, not everybody does, but I did. But at the same time, you gain people and you find out who your real true friends are. Um, so. It took me a while to realize that I wasn't alone, although it felt like it. I wasn't really, so like that was a massive, massive thing. Um, but it did bring on a lot of anxiety. Luckily, the suicidal tendencies kind of faded a bit um, because I knew I was on the road that I wanted to be on. I wanted to be alive. I wanted to see this journey through. Um, so, it, yeah, it was stressful. Um, um, if I fast forward till now, um, I still suffer with anxiety quite a lot. Um, it's more of a social anxiety though. Um, I still feel that my voice gives me away a lot and I still have struggled, struggled my beard and things like that. Certain telltale signs that I don't think many people pick up, but I know they're there. Um, and this is the thing that I have to remind other trans girls out as well as we exponentially make our problems worse make our problems exponentially worse you know like I know that my stubble is there you can't really see it because it's lit but it's there you know you can kind of see it um, to me it's a big black mark on my face in reality it's not really anything um, but I know it's there to me my voice I sound like this hi how are you doing that's what I feel I sound like I know it's not what I sound like but that she's laughing at me <laughs> But that's what I feel I sound like. I feel like I go into a shop and I'm like, Oi, I is liking to buy... I'm sorry, I'm not mocking anyone. But that's how I feel I sound like. Stop laughing! You don't sound like that. No, I know I don't. So, but I, 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 I manifest these things. I make them seem a lot worse. So when I'm in a public situation, I get anxious. Because I feel that everyone's looking at me like this. Like that. And, um, and it, it gives me such serious anxiety because, again, I don't want to be seen as a guy trying to pretend, to, well, pretending to be a girl. I want to be seen as a girl, you know? And I know that I am a girl. And I know that I look like a girl. And I know that I kind of sound like a girl. I'm getting better. But these things disappear. These this positiveness disappears when I'm in a social anxiety, a social environment that I don't know and I do. I tend to get severely anxious and then everything becomes bad. My nose becomes bigger, my beard becomes blacker, my voice becomes deeper, my muscles become bigger and eventually I'm this like 7 foot 600 kg hulk of a person trying to be a girl and it kills me and the anxiety builds and builds and builds until eventually I can't do it. I have to actually just leave wherever I am. And Caitlin's been around me when this happens and I just get like so anxious. I actually get grumpy. I get so moody. And it gets to a point where I can't function. 
and I've actually just got to go like lie down on a couch, have a cry, and just watch a movie or something, or disappear from the world. Um, so to my friends out there who do happen to suffer with anxiety, it is normal. The way I deal with it is I have to look back to where I've come from. Um, I feel that people who for try and forget where they came from will suffer more because they can't see how far they've come. So I feel if you look back and you go, okay, well, this is what I used to look like. This is what I used to sound like. This is how bad my beard was. This is how big I was. And then you look at yourself now, you're like, okay, like there's been progress. I, I'm not just that guy anymore. And the phot photographer today said to me straight, he was like, two years ago, you wouldn't have photographed me because I looked like a man trying to be a girl. Now, yes, I do look more feminine. Um, so there is progress. Um, and that does help me with my anxiety a bit. The fact that I've established the fact that I am progressing I'm not just wasting my time and money that, you know, like I am able to function. So that does help. Also having a, a partner, I know not everyone has, but having a partner as good as Caitlin also helps because she consistently like helps me realize that I am beautiful and that I am Aww. worthy of love. And because I think that's a big thing. The hand. Um, so I think that does help as well. So it might not necessarily be a partner, but I think they should. everyone should have a friend that understands that you go through such anxiety, so that when you are feeling that way, you have someone to talk to. Um, I think that's seriously important, because dealing with it by yourself can be quite tough. Um, so yeah, so I did, I have still deal with anxiety. The, the causes have changed, um, but it's still there. But I feel that learning to deal with that anxiety is the biggest key point. Um, everybody deals with it differently. <coughs> Excuse me. I feel that for me to deal and to cope, I have to be able to see how far I've come. I have to be able to see that I'm okay. I have to kind of get that validation from somewhere that I am a girl and I that I'm seen as a girl. For me, that's a big thing. It's not the case for all trans girls, but for me, it's a big thing. Um, I have contemplated suicide, um, I have cut myself a lot, um, and if these things are things that you guys go through, I think it's best to try get in touch with the suicide helpline if you have one, unfortunately I don't have the numbers for like everywhere, but I do think it's important, otherwise you can contact me on asknicola at gmail.com, I try to reply as often as I can, I'm not very good with it, but I'll try, otherwise message me on my Instagram, Nicola Photography. Um, and I'll reply to you there, definitely. Um, oh, Caitlin wants to know, on a lighter subject, on the lighter news, um, if you guys were to read a book on a transgender story, not necessarily mine, uh, <laughs> would you guys prefer to read it from the date that I started my transition? Or, you know, like, starting from me as a girl, like, in my transition? Or would you prefer to read, like, from my early childhood, from before I knew I was trans, and before I knew what trans was, and before everything? You know, so, like, from my get-go. Or would you prefer to read it from my get-go, get-go? Like, my trans get-go. Um, but, yeah, so I hope this video helps. I did kind of ramble a bit, but I think it is a bit more serious, and I think it is a good subject matter. I didn't uh, throw shit at you. Caitlin okay, didn't throw things at me this time, thank goodness. No. Nope. She missed. <laughs> um, but, but for serious, if you guys... For serious, I can't believe I just said that. Uh, but if you guys are feeling any of these, just understand that it is normal. It's not a weird thing. And it is beatable. You know, you can overcome the feelings of anxiousness and thoughts of suicide, I know, tend to take over. They tend to become all you can think about. But finding a way to distract yourself is the most important part, I think. Um, I also, photography helped me a lot because it taught me to f focus on the more beautiful things of life, little things that most people walk by and never actually notice. And I did the same thing with Caitlin. Caitlin was feeling depressed. I gave her a camera and I said, shoot. 
And, and I've been like a different person. So. And she has been a different person. So I think the most important thing is to try find, if you're a trans person that is, or anything, to try find a hobby or something to distract yourself that has nothing to do with what's causing your anxiety. So if you're trans, you know, find something that's going to distract you from being trans that has nothing to do with you being trans. If you're just, a, I don't know, if you're a fireman, f don't use water or fire, like read a book. <laughs> You know, I know, I know it's a terrible example, but I think you guys get what I'm saying. Anyway, I hope this has helped. I hope this video has been somewhat informative. And um, I hope you guys like my hair. Yay, because I've been playing with it the whole video. Okay, bye.